Okay, so I've just added a, a document, so in the other uh, folder called other DX and Atana, well, the uh, typing notes uh, with you guys. Um, so I've just made a couple of notes um, about uh, just one copy will do. But what I think, um, you know, the, what's the, 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 the status of the Atana efforts? Um, uh, by restating maybe initially the uh, the initial um, you know, goals for the project, so what we we um, uh, we envisioned was a uh, a push on the desktop, uh, both in terms of uh, improving its its design, its usability, uh, and also providing the technologies to drive that that uh, effort and um, when we did that, we, we realized that um, working on just one particular project would probably not be uh, you know, the best solution and we uh, also wanted to work with both the known community and also the KB community and I've seen during the past two years uh, it's been you know, very interesting and very productive to, um, to have the two communities working together um, for this cycle so we don't want to, you know, put aside the KDE compatibility and the and the, and the efforts we're, 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 we're making in uh, providing cross-platform technologies. However, we really want to see uh, Unity working well at Nali, and we're going to focus mostly on what it takes to have Unity working well for Nali. Um, the more, uh, you know, the project and the team involves, the more we're considering the set of IATA libraries as a subset, you know, on top of the known platform uh, that we need to, 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 to support our new uh, shell environment. Um, also, maybe a, like a review of the different technologies we have, so you know, being part of the IATA uh, project. So it all started with, uh, well, with 95 with me, I guess and indicator messages and um, to, well, to have an indicator, uh, a message in indicator uh, so Ted in particular you know, started designing um, uh, the technology so the library like the bus menu and leave indicate and then uh, as we wanted to host that um, on the, the no panel uh, because uh, well, we didn't have you know, plans or, uh, for a new panel or, or the Unity interface at that time uh, we started also adding things like uh, lib indicator, uh, all the indicator applet, uh, you know, uh, set of, uh, of packages. And so after two years, we're, we're at the point where we have, well, a lot of them, a lot of these uh, you know, libraries and technologies that are, uh, at our disposal. But we also feel it's the, you know, a good time, because we've learned during those two years, uh, a good time to refactor some of that. So um, one of the goals we have uh, for this cycle is to uh, add a better integration with you know, the community bus menu and, and the GK toolkit. Like we have two uh, uh, modules uh, currently at in gear and in the app menu GK driving the, uh, the, the global menu that do mostly the same thing. You know, they're, they're translating GK menus into the bus menus and, and back to GK menus. Um, uh, there are also, uh, well, the, I, I guess the, uh, the, the known community has expressed an interest also in, uh, in, in using the best menu. Uh, so figuring out uh, you know, how best to do that, and, and as part of that, uh, how we need to extend the protocol, uh, improve, um, you know, uh, improve its performance, so we're never, at, you know, we're never at with this performance, we always want to do better. Um, and in particular, when we've been using uh, the bus menu with Skin and the global menu, we've seen that oh, some menus can be really large, and so the uh, the XML um, the format uh, was was actually uh, slowing us down. <coughs> um, this session, I guess, is also uh, a, a good way to to request feedback on you know how we're doing with the uh, the uh, technologies that is. 
if there are any ideas on how to improve that or um, concerns on particular aspects of the, uh, of the libraries and so on. Uh, I'd like to, to see that discussed. Um, we have a couple of, well, we have a very good set of indicators now. Uh, well, thanks to NPT specifications, we've uh, eventually uh, created new indicators and, and, and posted them on the known panel uh, and also uh, moved um, uh, applications uh, so that they could use the new app indicator system uh, in order to clean up uh, the, the, the panel. Um, yet there are still uh, Azure indicators we need to, we need to switch to becoming uh, full uh, or, sorry, applets. We still need to switch to becoming full app indicators. Uh, also, uh, some of them we want to merge, like the keyboard indicator, potentially. Uh, so that's something we'd like to, uh, to, to discuss. Um, and you know, there's probably also design aspects here. Um, that is, um, the specifications are are uh, being published, you know, um, during the past cycles. Uh, I guess all of them are, are online, um, and um, again, uh, are there design elements that, that need to be uh, discussed with the community or that can be shared uh, with other projects? One thing that comes to mind is the, um, the what is it, the time zone thing? You know, that you have designed and actually uh, upstream adopted uh, some, of your, uh, some of your ideas already, so which means that the, the delta between what you want to uh, see uh, on the panel, what we need to do has been um, has been reduced. Yeah, that was the time and date indicator. If I remember well. Okay. So that was the long introduction. <laughs> Silence. <laughs> um, Could I ask? Um, has the firm opinion about the ordering of the indicators been established? I remember yeah. not too long ago that the, we're going to lock them in a certain order and we're going to fix yeah. it. So this jumbling that happens when resizing will yeah. never happen again. Has that been determined yet? Like what order they will be? Yes, we do enforce uh, an order for the system indicators, and we also do memorize the, the order to which uh, app indicator. You know, uh, kind of application. Are our printings also on the panel? So at the moment, I don't think there is any more juggling or um, switching once the indicators are, are there. Is there an issue? Uh, I can never be sure. <laughs> <laughs> I forget which way they're supposed to go. If there is one, uh, yeah, I'd love to, to hear about it. Because we do have support for that, we may have, but. Uh, so uh, that's actually the second part of the, uh, of the session I wanted to. Am I on my? Probably that keeps going down. Ah, that's all right. Okay. Well, the second part of the of this session I wanted to to see you know the main bugs uh, we have with the uh, Azure well Azure the system indicators or the app indicators. Um, and, and you know, make sure we have a good uh, set of priorities for this cycle for fixing them. Paul Sladen asks, uh, how is the order of the, um, the menus determined? For the system ones, um, the way I decided it was the one at, that it should be in order of um, which are most likely to be there from the right to the left or from it, that trading end um, inwards. So the session menu is always there, therefore it's in the corner, the, the clock 
and it's nearly always there, so it goes second from there. Uh, right, and volume is a little less likely than that, and so on. Um, all, all, all that is for is just to um, increase consistency between um, different users. Um, for the application specific menus, um, I don't remember the exact algorithm, but there is an algorithm to make sure that they will be, they appear in the same order for two different users who add them in, no matter what order they add them in. Did Google this here? Explain that algorithm. Yeah. Well, we can go into the Um Right. Uh, feedback from, from the audience at that point. So who's using, uh, well, who's been you know, developing uh, with indicators? Yeah, we've, we've been working on that. Yeah. So, well, that's the, 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 you know, the main issues you're seeing. Uh, well, the, the main issues we've been encountering uh, were the fact that there's a lot of menus are, it's, it's still hard to pass on the menus uh, and make them work properly. The, there are some, uh, there are often signals that, that, that don't get through or there's mm -hmm. different types of menu items that are not fully supported so they uh, don't work as expected. The exotic, the exotic types or the rare, the rare menu types are often less supported because you have to do everything by hand. We have to declare everything in the deepest menu library uh, which we pass on. Sorry, I'm not in the, the last part. Uh, we have to, in the deepest menu library, we have to declare everything we are passing over and that just makes it easier to miss things. Because especially sub menus have been problematic. Yeah. Okay. yeah. There are CTK tables. <coughs> We're talking about the indicators in general here, not about the application menus. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah. Because the application menu code, which um, you know, which is an app menu GDK, is actually the uh, the newest version of our uh, GDK to deepest menu converter. Um, by, by pouring this and by merging that uh, with the rest of the app in care of uh, the library and modules, uh, we hope to actually fix a lot of the, well, a lot, a couple of the issues we are still experiencing with uh, app in care, like, uh, yeah, elements not being reflected or issues or difficulties with uh, submenus. Because the new algorithm is, is more, you know, uh, more effective at tracking the, the <coughs> The where um, types or kinds of GDK uh, menu items that sometimes uh, applications are using. Uh, initially, well, you know, we set up to, to do the app menu uh, system so that by connecting to the internals of GDK would be like a, you know, a lot of, uh, or a very straightforward. Um, Translation uh, mechanism would have to would have to develop. Actually, there are a lot of very subtle ways uh, GDK menu items are are you know, um, created and connected uh, with the rest of the application, and that's uh, what creating all the issues we're using at the moment. Yeah. Uh, is the Gabi server <coughs> back online? Yes. Yeah. Oh. It's empty again. You may want to copy the contents first. Yep. Right there. Copy, copy, copy. Oh, it's back. Right. Hey, Carl. Hi. Welcome. You're there. Right on time. <laughs> right on time, actually. So um, I went through. Um, Long and I opened up that boring introduction <laughs> to <laughs> explain what the Atta uh, project was about and where I thought we were standing. And in the second part of this discussion, I like to see uh, you know the uh, the issues we have with the indicators, mostly the app indicators. So um, we're we're already chatting about that. 
suggest people write their books down on a piece of paper, make an airplane out of it, and throw it in the now. So I know there's one outstanding bug with Notify OSD and Sound Menu. So when you have uh, the menu open and there's a track change, you get a notification that blocks the actual update in the menu. We've been looking at that, what's the nicest way to solve that. Yeah, it's just when you have the menu open and you, you change track or the track changes naturally, you see it actually, it just blocks the menu. It's, it's file already, we're going to look at fixing that. It's cycle. somewhat similar to something that I've had um, where I was requires tracking the focus of um, menus in the old version. We can't do that with indicators. Right. So for instance, um, I was would say set menu uh, take focus false. So the menu wouldn't change the focus. Mm -hmm. um, but Ted Gould said that you could uh, use like Banff to figure out what actually has the focus at any point in time. So if the menu is open, maybe you can find out whether or not the menu is open before you start acting on the events. Yeah. Something like that. Uh, yeah, we were talking about maybe Empress solution as well. Maybe depends on what way we can do it. I think we need to talk on it more, but it, it's actually filed and I'll get onto this cycle. Mm -hmm. If you want to yeah. sign it to me, I'll look at it. Cool, we, we can talk about that afterwards, yeah. That'd be great. Um, well, that's with the salmon. I think we're looking at, with the design team with Otto, uh, redesigning the transport controls to the play button. Um, the album art as well, the rounded album art might go away because we might just go back to square because of the selection bug. When you select it, it looks a bit nasty on the round corners. Uh, just some spacing issues that will be fixed, icons will be fixed, uh, and hopefully playlists will land once we get Empress to take the extension and clients to implement the extension. Um, yeah, Ted, just before uh, you, you arrived, um, I was also mentioning so the, um, the goal to merge uh, the admin gear and admin UGK uh, code bases. Um, uh, so, hoping that it should fix most of the issues and date issues uh, or what was the same with admin gear. So, um, any more on that? So, I know, well, this is mostly a Gordy's uh, rail here. Yeah. I mean, um, it's just that both of them basically, <coughs> both of them uh, introspect basically the object structure in UTK. Mm -hmm. And they're, they're basically the same code, except the admin new code has just been beat up a lot more because applications do more crazy stuff. Right. And so we'd like to have more beat up code everywhere. And so we want to be very to make them work together. And, I don't know, those shared libraries, I don't know how they'll share the code. But the idea is just that we don't have one, two sets of code, and two, we've got the most robust code everywhere. Including all of the first um, menu items being clicked and, and things like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The admin UGK does all that kind of fun stuff. So the the admin, the in lib app indicator ones is just a little bit. It's the first generation effectively. Um, okay. The the top um, the top issues. Um, or indicators. This, this is what I, I wanted to you know, try to see bubble up during this session. Uh, make sure that we have the right set of priorities for, for the cycle. Um, so issues with that indicators, I see we have, here we have an option to, to fix it by uh, doing this merge um, and, and using the best model we have at the moment for, for doing the, the translation. We have a session on that, right? Right. Yeah. I think um, session on every indicator, right? And so, yeah, uh, that's actually the, the last part of the, uh, of, the, of the session I want to see. That is, as we, as we review the, the main issues and we also you know, contemplate the different indicators, make sure that uh, you know, everyone has a session uh, or that if there is a need for a particular session uh, during this week, it be added to address an issue that would, uh, you know, uh, come out of this discussion. So we do have the session on the um, on the, the main GDK uh, code. Uh, 
we've been working a lot on, uh, on the different bugs, so uh, Carl. So, but apart from that, the main issue and the other one you were mentioning was um, was bad. So, how do you think we're doing with the, uh, the indicators? Um, there's a lot of missing features from the status menu, like Tomboy uh, yep. uses um, motion notify events to track where the cursor is over individual menu items, so you can figure out whether or not you're clicking on the pin button or something else. Mm -hmm. um, that's something I really don't think we want to be pushing motion notify events over our debus G menu, so um, maybe we have some kind of um, active zones or something um, inside of the individual well, menu item. Or we propose, I don't know, do we have a demons menu session or not? Yeah. <coughs> I don't know if we have one, but we suppose we yeah. propose is actually doing uh, the grid and column layout, like the HPA menus. Yeah. So you can make a column that the pins and then get events on those that add individual items. Yeah, probably Which I think makes more sense than sending motion in a motor file. When I looked at the tomboy, I was pretty sure. <laughs> Uh, and I, I think I'm going to get time to actually do the grid layout this, this cycle. So we feel so involved in that. Yeah, we go. Well, I think we've got. We need to write up official spec propose it. I think the weather indicator weather guys really want to use it too for um, making the weather look nice. Mm -hmm. um, they paid me about it, but we just didn't get time to do the grid layout for it. Um, yeah. So I don't have a session on US menu, but we can. Uh, there, there is one uh, registered in the system, but um, I'm not seeing it in the, the actual schedule, so I'll make sure that it's it gets scheduled. scheduled. Okay. That's good. I was hoping also as well to demonstrate um, to work with the sound menu for clients to be able to register without using the Vindicate. So yes. they just do it straight with Empress, uh, and that would remove dependencies from that stuff upstream. Um, that would help, I think clients embracing so people like uh, Spotify could easily uh, yeah. integrate into the menu. So you have a session on that as well, on some menu that is in the system? But I don't think so, I don't think there's a sound menu session. Well, there is one in the, in the system, I mean in the set of blueprints, but however it's not in the actual schedule as well, so uh, I'm just uh, taking notes to you know, make sure that those are, are uh, added as we move down. Um, are there top issues? Uh, people have been complaining a lot about the spacing between rooms that have been held with files out of the room. The, the, the spacing between individual indicator icons, there's a lot of complaints. <coughs> people uh, saying they're too wide, there's too much yeah. space between them. It's, uh, the the I were just talking yeah, about I'm working on that right now, so there'll be an update. And the icon screen, how is it? Uh, well, the, uh, as talking with Ted, the, um, it doesn't really matter how wide. I, I mean, before we had to make sure that it was exactly 22 by 22 pixels. But now, uh, it doesn't really matter how wide the icon is. So I can make a consistent buffer and say, well, this icon is 22 pixels high, but it's only 16 pixels wide. So we can have even horizontal spacing. Yeah. But, um, there used to be some kind of of as we move here, you had a set to make it when the size of the item and dynamic in case of in case of large panels. How is that now? Yeah, so we removed that because it wasn't it was but now it's a fixed size height of the width can be variable. So like the battery icon is wider than the other icons. So the width is not so uh, but the debug the dynamic icon size and property was causing too many problems because it wasn't actually a real style attribute. So we had to drop that just because of all the warnings it was giving. Um, <coughs> I'd like to go back to that someday. I don't know that we'll get time in this cycle. The larger panels, some people have panels of 40 pixels uh, high, um, they have very small items. They yes. have very low, low height items. I, I don't. I think the default setup so we won't have anybody with panels that are 40 pixels high. Yes. We only go yeah. to, to support people who do have high panels. I, I don't have any intention of doing it. Uh, I, we can figure out a patch that makes it all work. I don't have any issue with applying it. Um, the other choice we can make is cycles over and spend time porting indicator applet to um, the debus interface. But I think that's mostly a reason why I'm, because I guess no debugs, because no panel switching from going to. Yeah. <coughs> so it's supposed to be a reconfile, but it never is a reconfile. 
So the idea is that um, we're going to redesign the buttons. Uh, Otto's working on a redesign. Um, I need to do the key handling properly as well, the keyboard handling, so that it properly goes down and select and goes back and forward and all that kind of thing. I need to work on that. I just didn't get that finished for this item. Um, yeah, so there is going to be a revisit of how it looks. Uh, it's up to, I suppose, up to Otto and um, let's see what way he wants to do it. We'll, we'll come up with some new designs. I have a question. Um, is there any attempt to look at the uh, panel applets that are available by default when you right click add to panel? Um, a lot of those need to go away and some need to be actually useful. So like, well, like for instance, um, the, uh, you can add a second application places system menu in your panel, which is not Useful. So the Unity menu bar does not have a yes. uh, panel um, thing. Um, so that is <coughs> a good point that we need to go through these items and say, okay, which of them are useful, which of them should we encourage people to re-implement as? Right, so as, as an example of one that might be <coughs> useful to re-implement is the CPU frequency scaling one that lets you, when you have a laptop, go from on-demand versus power saving versus uh, performance mode, remember. <coughs> Not something we show by default for good reasons, but it would function as a, as a kind of menu. 
Turns out on demand is better in all cases. Uh, no? Unless it's a for some kind of airplane mode. Yeah, yeah. there's yeah. a separate discussion for which you can go and Google Matthew Garrett for that. But um, yeah, yeah, for people who want to implement something about like that, we should we should make them make it easy for them to do so. Right, and there's a lot of junk that's mislabeled in the ad to panel. Yeah. Speaking of which, so um, upstream adoption, and you know, we've, we've seen a lot of uh, application, new application developers uh, well, using the indicators, so we have a set of patches. Uh, we also have so specific indicators that have been uh, created for uh, for the uh, Atana uh, uh, What do we need to do, you know, more and better um, to continue with that? So that was a few things. Yeah. Yeah, first. Pass it completely different actually here, so maybe it's more complicated, but I do have a point. Uh, maybe it could be improved. Uh, there are a lot of different APIs now. Mm -hmm. um, and I wouldn't say we should consolidate all different uh, projects there, but maybe we should make it clearer to have one entry point for all specific Ubuntu uh, APIs. Yeah. So you are going to, to see the new uh, unityubuntu.com, which uh, um, provides a landing page for uh, you know, a lot of the uh, Atana technologies. But yeah, no, I take your point. Yeah, we need to put them together. I think the community and teams are working on like developer.ubuntu.com yeah. or something like that, just yeah. trying to provide that landing for development. Yeah, and loads of the API yeah. and docs. They're all, they're all documented if you install the package, well then you get away from it. It's true, it's all right. Oh. Thank you. Do you mind, do you you mind a this and I might miss the answer. Um, there's a bunch of people building applications with their own application indicator. Mm -hmm. um, instead of integrating into the existing Indicator. Few indicators. Yeah. Like, I mean, the indicator me, which has like yeah. the chat stuff, and then well, people I mean, are creating other app indicators. My, yeah, yeah. I mean, my impression of the indicator thing would there would be sort of five or six, and whatever you want to do, which had a permanent presence in the panel, that actually probably or almost certainly fit into one of those mm -hmm. categories. So you wouldn't have a bunch of apps with their own app indicator because then that's just the same thing as them having their own GTK status icon. Yeah. But I don't know if there's plans for other indicators that we don't currently have and what those plans are. The one I hear coming up an awful lot is kind of a, an ongoing thing indicator. So um, yeah. Tracker is indexing mm -hmm. and Ubuntu one is synchronous. Oh, that might be a menu thing, uh, a network. There will be a discussion on this one. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. I'm, I'm sure we've been discussing it for ages. I just don't know whether there's a plan written down to what you read. No, no, there's no. We're, we're in no illusions that we could ever cover everything in, in half a dozen or 10 or 15 um, menus. And that's why we have that, that um, capability for applications to write their custom ones. Um, and there's nothing technically we can do to prevent a chat application from making its own so going to messaging menu or to prevent a music player from making its own so going yeah. to sound menu. And that's just a, a social thing and an education thing and documentation thing about you know, if you're writing music player, this is what we should do. I, 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 don't, I don't think anyone's doing that education and that socialization and that documentation. That's true. There are no tech writers on the ESC. And it, it would be really cool if when someone said, oh, look, my application's down, got an application indicator, you say, actually, that would make more sense yes. in the network indicator, because you're doing a networky thing at the moment, so put it in the network, not that it's a network indicator. Yet. I see that there's an interesting resource uh, in um, the web page. So uh, when we set up to port applications, to use the app indicator system, uh, Matthew reviewed all the different applications, yes. you know, and gave guidelines as whether they should be ported, how they should be ported, and so on. I see it's still, you know, up to date. Uh, maybe a, a, a little refresh would help, but mostly this is this is uh, you know giving the first set of directions. The second thing I wanted to add here, uh, you know, more from a technical point of view, is that this notion of category indicator. Well, we started it with the messaging menu. We've extended that with the song menu. Um, we're going into this direction. This cycle, I don't think, will do a lot of changes. That it would be great to have like generic uh, category indicators, so that 
both the sound menu, the messaging menu, you know, other category menus uh, could use the same, uh, you know, mechanisms to register items, to, um, you know, contribute to different menus from different uh, modules and so on. Um, that is, we know we want to get there and be more generic, but the cycle is going to be short for us in terms of you know, all the changes we have to do. But, yeah. It, it, it was really about, you know, I mean, yes, you've got a kind of an idea now about where you want to be eventually our sponsors. Mm -hmm. Whether you flesh that out to probably you say, at some point we will build a, an ongoing things indicator. Mm -hmm. Well, you haven't got that, that sort of level of detail yet. That would be a nice one to have. File transfers. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Handle things like file transfers. So I'm already on Chrome as as saying it's a bad idea. Okay. Um, <laughs> but okay, <laughs> that's, 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 that's not a fair <coughs> position. Um, but no, we, we don't. We, we don't have some random asset for anything. Right. No. I, I don't think we keep it. I just thought maybe I hadn't found it on the week. No. <laughs> 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 Yeah. You asked before uh, what could be done to make it easier for application developers yeah, to pull exactly, off. Yeah. Um, we got sidetracked. Um, the one thing that people have been asking for a lot is signals on the menus. So when you click, that signal comes through and Ted's already got a plan for fixing that. So oh, right. that's, that's the one thing that people have been complaining about. And it also causes the uh, known call manager book where it starts eating menu if your UPS decides to send an event out every 0.25 microseconds or whatever it is to tell you yeah. how much more power there is in the bloody thing. Um, but that's actually a GTK uh, yes. menu lead, isn't yes. it? Yeah. I still haven't found that one, really. No, Aaron Ian was looking at it a lot, and he hasn't found it either. No, no he I has a test case that he's proven in GTK, yeah. but he hasn't found where in GTK it's caused. Yeah, I was just chatting with him about that test case. <coughs> he found uh, G slice doesn't help very much. It gets quite like, <laughs> right in the way. Yeah. Um, you switch off G slice, and you can see some leaks, but most of them are at the X level. Yeah. And it doesn't look like it's GTK menu, which is causing it. And if it is a leak at the X level, and it's just a GTK window or an X window which is leaking, then um, you need an X to fix it. Yeah. Really. So um, the other, the other two really annoying things that we probably I have actually branches for, but and haven't broken on my system yet, so therefore they're perfect. Um, is the uh, startup of app indicators. Sometimes they fall back and don't yeah. come, don't yeah, come back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've got a patch that I think fixes that. I haven't gotten one not to, one not to come back now. Uh, and also the uh, quiver issue with going into the notification area for half a second or whatever before it comes back out. Mm -hmm. um, but unfortunately that will cause a quiver change as well. But it should be okay. Is it not some uh, loading water thing that we can do with that as well to prevent them trying to get into the stage? So yeah, I think there is. There. I think iBus gets really burnt by that because I think it actually starts before D-Bus does. I was looking at the uh, session stuff. Oh, I think iBus actually requires D-Bus. Yeah, so I don't know how that works. I'm kind of curious. Uh, there's so many things broken in iBus. Yeah, because of the menu. Because it looks like the session actually builds up an environment variable and the last one executes it, and that starts uh, D-Bus. But iBus actually starts it. Yeah, but and so I, I think that if you actually do solve some things there, and I was wouldn't work. Well, my plan for I was to just throw away all of the Python code which exists for the iOS indicator at the moment, um, migrate some of it into known um, settings even, and then have um, profiles in for profiles. So you know you, you change the profile, you're changing to a set of preferences which can include a keyboard layout and an input method and things like that, which means that I was an in indicator is no longer a problem. And at the minute, basically every second line of code in iOS is a problem somewhere down the line. So it's, it's just worth it to throw it away and start again. Cool. Well, I, I am wondering what the plans are for Notify OSD. I think that there were previously there have been questions raised about it. I think there hasn't been very much active development for it. Uh, I don't, not sure if all the specifications are implemented and um, there are some time out problems, uh, especially and the example the bench with media player is now reusing all notifications because uh, not five day, not, not five hours D is listening to close uh, uh, things because uh, mm -hmm. so when you quickly change the song and you wouldn't uh, reuse the old notifications, you, the queue would fill up and it would take ages before all songs would have been displayed. 
So there are some issues with that. Is there any session? So, yeah. The, the, the main yeah. thing is missing from Notify OST now are the, um, the link based duration that, that shorter messages should be up for a short amount of time. Um, sound so that, that an application can specify it wants a sound effect to play. Um, and we want to, to experiment with the, the appearance and the position of it. Um, I don't know whether we'll get time for that this cycle, but anyone else is welcome to to that as for the specific case of, of reusing an application for showing current sound, that seems like exactly what the music player should be doing. It shouldn't that should never be the case where there are two messages in the queue for mm -hmm. two songs being played by the same player when it's only a queue playing one. If, it, if you can close the old one and create a new one, would it, would it, would it be a better solution? It, there is, there is this, in the notification yeah. demo specification, there is actually a, a close function, yeah. but not how OSD isn't following that specification, it's ignoring it. Sorry, I'm going to display that. It should do a replace. Yes. Yeah, instead of a close and, and then very quickly do one. Or replace is a better way to do that. Because you can't have two songs playing at the same time. Yeah. So therefore you can't have two notifications. So it seems like replace is always going to be the third time. Duration is there in sound support? Yes. 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 Matthew, so you were saying uh, the, the delay based on message length, the sound support, and the third one, I forgot. Just those two. Just those two, okay. So, uh, All right, the, the appearance of the um, One thing to know about Noitra's so yeah, uh, is that I've seen uh, already patches, I think, for uh, fixing some of the duration issues. The specification is, is published and has been uh, you know, up there for a long time with welcoming patches. Right. Uh, it's true that we have you know, located a lot of resources on Alpha OSD since uh, well, the last two cycles, mostly, um, to, to focus on uh, other new features. Uh, but we welcome patches. We're receiving, you know, some regularly, uh, and we're, you know, uh, we're, we're very. Uh, uh, we thank our contributors, you know, for helping us uh, making uh, Notify OSD better. Now that said, uh, because uh, Unity uh, is now, you know, running in a window manager, and uh, we'll be able to use. Uh, more of the window manager and of the, the, the rendering capacities we're putting there. We're considering um, merging, switching Notify with me uh, and, and you know, adding Notify with me run directly as part of the, the rest of Unity in the window manager. At least the rendering side of that. Uh, which means that if you do have a patch, you know, consider that it may also have to support Another deployment, uh, you know, uh, method where Notify with me as like a, you know, a, a, a view independent backend and a, 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 a GL specific um, presentation layer. Um, something else in mind when I was mentioning Notify with me, but I forgot. Um, anyway. Okay, uh, I think we have like five minutes left. Um, so on the third part, checking that uh, we do have sessions uh, scheduled for the important topics this week. So Ted was mentioning this in the session, so I'll make sure it's scheduled uh, during the week, if it's not appearing now. Uh, same for some menu. Uh, again, we have a, a long set of um, uh, sessions on, on gears this week, uh, starting with the, the data yeah. one. Um, and it's in particular for Ubuntu one, so we have a session on Ubuntu one and the integration. Yes, we do. We do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but so what about the indicators? So because for the moment you're, well, you had your indicator and you're also still in the me menu. Uh, yeah. I you know, apologize for 
pretty good out of it. Yes. Momentarily. We, we don't have, we have talked a lot, thought a lot about having some kind of indication of ongoing stuff. And a bunch of the work that we plan to do during this cycle is integrating into Zeitgeist. Uh, so uh -huh. We're storing everything that's going on, but the, the output side of that, how we make people aware of that, is probably not for the natty side of it. We're still trying to build the, the infrastructure on which we can then do something. I mean, if anyone's got any brilliant ideas, I'd very much like to hear them. Uh -huh. As long as the ideas are, bring the indicator out, we want it back. Not a But we don't want to do something. We, we don't have anything specifically plan for this cycle, I don't think, but okay. if there's anything compelling, we, we might okay. try to One more thing, MPT, the sister with Diamond Plan. Great, so nearly a year ago, about 10 months ago, um, I announced that we were planning to get rid of the notification area um, in a year's time, and now we can see why, because uh, Unity has a, a new panel, which um, does not have the old GNOME you know, outputs in it. Um, so we are on track to do that. There are just a couple of annoying exceptions, uh, where we have whole swathes of software which has not been written with Ubuntu specifically in mind, and we can't reasonably expect them to change their applications to suit Ubuntu users. One of those is Windows applications, so not one. The other is Java applications, which expect some sort of notification area to be present. Um, with Wayne, you could, in theory, have a, um, a Wayne API, which does the history stuff, Windows style on one side, and on the other side, it does an indicator. That would be possible. Wayne Bank would make it quite possible to do that. Because it currently uses the system tree in some instances in Wine. So, so it's also a piece right And he has assured me, and I have no reason to doubt him, that um, the Windows Notification Area API is, is much like the Remote Notification Area API, and that uh, items in it can do pretty much anything they like. They can swipe a single click, double click, right click, pedal fix, scroll wheel, much more than. Um, can you API yep. ever could or should? Yeah. Um, sure. And for that reason, for that reason, and for the Java case, we are going to have a vestigial notification area equivalent in the um, Unity menu bar, which will hold just Wine and Java uh, application notification area. And if for anyone writes an app and Hooks in the wine just to have an old style panel Then you burn the wine, that's fine. So, so <laughs> this, this, this change should happen early in that year, so that uh, anyone who hasn't got the memo yet will um, realize their items aren't appearing and they'll ask us why and help them design something they have to do instead. I see. Yeah, last question. Um, Sorry. The question is about Windicators. Uh, no, <laughs> no, there is no word on Windicators when I read Windicators back. Sorry. Alligator Indicator? Forget about you. The Wii menu? <laughs> Anything? The Wii menu? The Wii menu? menu? I, I there's, a, there's a session proposed for, I think, this tomorrow, uh, something called a we menu. How, I think for the community. How can we integrate a new community into the menu bar? Yeah. Oh, well, that's the Nintendo way. <laughs> 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 that's much more useful. Um, <laughs> so, so I'll, I'll be interested to see what, what the, the proposal is, but, um, but with, without having seen it, I, I, I'd just say, be careful of assuming that that I mean, is the solution to every problem. Mm -hmm. There's an indicator for everything now it is. Yeah, so that, that's something where we, again, it comes down to education and discouragement and Can't as a last resort, ridicule. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
so the last thought on my mind is um, when you add an application launcher, all we have by default is Firefox now. Um, I have the idea that a user would usually want these next to one another. So like right now, you know, you have the Firefox that launch right next to the system. Right. So the the menu bar does not contain application launches. We have a roughly big application launcher on the side of the screen for our purpose. I'm I'm thinking about no um, just like my thought is this quick experience of adding multiple application launchers, it seems like it'd be nicer to collect them together rather than to have them function on a separate panel at once. You mean for the 2D fallback where we go back to the no panel? Yeah. Uh, I don't think we're making many huge changes to um, to the no panel on the 2D case. Um, that's, you know, that's, that's there's people who need it, but hopefully fewer and few, fewer people need it over time. All right. Well, thanks for attending this session. Um, yeah, I think this is